Hey gang, back with another short Avid tutorial. Uh, this one is on troubleshooting. There's an error message you may run into that says upstream pipe stall. And it's a little bit of a tricky one that can have multiple different causes. And it's also pretty uncommon. I had been using Avid for a long time before I ever ran into it. And then I was looking around to try to find the solution. And there wasn't a lot of great information out there on it. So I thought it would be a useful thing for me to just run through some of the possibilities of what it might be. So again, the error message is upstream pipe stall. If you do a quick Google search on this, a lot of the first things that come up, which is what you should check first, is that it has to do with possibly something with your drives. So what this error message is really telling you is Avid is trying to get some data from somewhere and is not getting it. It's not coming through where it's expecting it to come from. So one possibility with this could be that you have a drive that's bad or a drive that is not running at the speed that Avid needs. So maybe if you're trying to play some high res, high data rate media, and you're trying to play it back in real time and the drive actually can't feed it into Avid fast enough, that would be a potential problem. Or it could just be if the drive is working too slow for Avid to run off of. And that would be the first thing I would check. The first time I got this error and I looked it up, that's what all the information was about. So definitely I would suggest checking that if that's the problem, it might suck that you have to buy a new drive or fix your drive or something, but that's a clear solution. It turned out I was actually getting it for a different reason that wasn't showing up in a lot of these forums, which is why I wanted to post something about this. And it actually had to do with a problem with the original media itself. So I'm going to show you what happened here and kind of a way around it. So here is uh, the original clip that I was working with. And you can see I have it loaded in here and I've just linked it. So I used my source browser, you know, right click input source browser and find the clip and link it in. So it shows up here, so I'm still reading off the original media. And in this case, this is uh, some media off a Blackmagic 6K camera in a raw format. So it's very data intensive. I obviously want to transcode it for editing with it in Avid. And that was where I was running into trouble. So let me show you the error here, what happens. I'm gonna do what I normally would and transcode it. And in this case, I'm just gonna do this one clip because I'm just gonna try to illustrate the error here and say I'm gonna transcode it to this drive. And it doesn't actually, in this case, matter what the target resolution in codec is. I'm going to run into the error anyway, so I'm just going to leave it at DNxHRLB. That's fine. I'm going to transcode it, and it's going to start transcoding the clip. And then partway through this, it is going to give me this error message. So I'm going to let it run, and we'll fast forward to where the error comes up and then talk about what happened. Okay, so here you can see we've gotten that error several minutes into the transcode. And if you hear a loud humming in the background, it's because my laptop started running its fan as it was trying to go through this transcode. Uh, hopefully that will turn off here in a minute. Um, you can see this right here, and there's a bunch of other stuff in here. File writer detected upstream pipe stall. And so basically what it's saying is I'm trying to write this data here, and I'm trying to get data from somewhere else somewhere. You think of like downstream and upstream, think upstream somewhere before it's coming to me, there was a stall and things stopped coming. So I was getting this error and kept trying to figure out if it was something with the drive. And I'll say something that I didn't realize quickly enough. So I'll advise others to be smarter than I was, is I was transcoding a batch of files and I sort of spot checked the files and the files all seemed to be fine. So I didn't think it was something file-based. I was kind of pursuing this thing that it was an issue with the drive or the connection or something for a while. And it turned out it was this one specific file that had an error that was causing it. So let me show you what happened here. This is a very bizarre sort of error, but it continually kept me from doing this transcode on this whole batch until I identified that it was really just this specific file causing the problem. So I'll hit OK here. It did not transcode. We're just sort of left with this. And I got this clip here, and I sort of scrolled through and showed that it actually does work. There's footage, it looks jumpy. That's because this was an undercrank, a fast motion. So I don't remember exactly what, but it was something that was shot at something like one frame per second instead of 24 frames per second or something to give a sped up feel as someone was walking through this parking lot and such. And here's the problem. If I start scrolling through here, you'll see at some point it just sort of freezes and gives this error. 
So what it turned out happened here, and this is, again, not something you would run into regularly. It was very bizarre, and I think it was a glitch on the Blackmagic 6K working with this fast motion stuff. It recorded the file the length of time it was running, and I think it's because it recorded audio along with it, but because it was recording fast motion video, it only recorded video for the first part of it. If this took five minutes to shoot, but it was shooting fast motion, you know, there's only a couple minutes of actual footage. So we get partway through here and it just sort of freezes up and we get this error. And so what's happening is Avid is trying to transcode what it thinks is, you know, let's say a five minute clip here, or, you know, I can actually look and see what it is right there. Six minutes and five second clip. So it's trying to transcode six minutes and five seconds of footage. But the problem is at some point here, it runs out of footage. There is no more footage in the rest of the file because there's no more video because the camera wasn't recording video for the rest of it. It was just recording this smaller number of frames relative to the length of time it was running. If that makes sense. So we, we have the video from the whole time, but because it was running in fast motion and not recording as many frames as it normally would, this thing that took six minutes to do, we get through in the first you know, minute 15 or something like that. So, okay, it wasn't one, one frame per second, something like that, it was a higher rate. Anyway, the problem is actually, I have this file where the file itself has an error in it, and Avid isn't sure what to do with it as it's transcoding. So, the important takeaway here to solve this problem is if this is the issue, identify what clip has the problem. I found this by sort of going clip through clip and really checking through them. And then when I realized like, oh, it's this one that was in fast motion, I was like, I have one other clip that was in fast motion. Let me look at that. And sure enough, that had the same issue. Here's the other one, which again, you can see looks fine and then freezes up here and we get this error. And if I go back to this section where there is footage, it plays fine. And when I went beyond that, you could see there was like a slowdown and a lag and it stopped working correctly. So once I pulled those two clips out, I was able to transcode the rest of my media just fine and work with it all, and that worked great. I still have the issue of I'd like to get these clips into my project and be able to work with them. This is kind of a jerry-rigged solution. There's not a perfect solution to this because the problem is the footage itself is encoded incorrectly. But basically what I decided to do was, okay, I'm just going to export a new clip and treat that as my master that just has part of this. So go back to my original clip here and I'm going to make a new sequence. I would actually give this a name based on what the actual clip was. In this case, it's CO37 fast motion with error. So I know what that is. Okay. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to mark an endpoint at the beginning. And I want it to find where this actually kind of dies out. Okay, now I'm going forward frames and you can see nothing's happening. So I'm going to go back to the last frame where there's actually some data. Set an out point, put that into my sequence with B. So now I've got this clip and what I'm going to do is export this clip and then bring that back in as basically my new master clip. Depending on what my workflow is, there's some different ways you could do this. What I ended up doing was I went ahead and exported it at kind of low res, compressed just like I would with the transcode anyway, brought it back in. And if I end up using this clip in the edit, I know for this specific clip, I'm going to go back in and kind of manually rematch the original master clip because I want the raw data and stuff. The issue is I don't want to work with a sort of fixed re-exported version as my master because it has the raw color data and there's no way for me to export and keep all the raw color data. I could color it now, but I don't know exactly what color look we want for the movie. So I'm basically going to kind of do my own off the books transcode, but I'm just going to have to remember, and I actually made notes in my editing notes about this file that in the end, when we're ready to finally finish out the movie, relink to all the master footage, do the final coloring in all its 6K raw glory, I'm going to have to manually find the parts of this clip that I use. So I'm just going to know I'm going to have to do that. Alternately, if this was something that wasn't raw color data, like let's say this was something that was either already colored or something that was in like a log mode where you can export it and you're not losing any color information because there's not raw information, it's whatever is there. I don't want to get into color science here in this, that's beyond the scope of this particular tutorial. But if it's something where I'm not going to necessarily lose anything by re-exporting, I could export this at full resolution and just treat that as my new master clip and completely forget about this clip that has the data error in it and just ignore this entirely and work with the new one that I bring in. 
In this case, I went ahead and said export to file and I did it at something low res. I don't remember exactly what I did. Probably a DNX HD LB, something like that. And, you know, make sure I know where I'm putting it. Put that here. And it's just going to export just the part of the file that actually works here. So this actually will work fine. And then I could bring it back in and use that exported clip as my new master clip and work with that. So I'm going to abort out of here. So that's command period to abort and export if you didn't know that one. And you could also do this outside of Avid. I think I actually ended up doing this in Resolve when I ran into this problem to export this new clip that didn't have all that extra time code at the end that had no video media associated with it, so it did not confuse the editor, and bring that back into Avid that way. So if you run into upstream pipe stall and it turns out it's not something to do with your drive speeds or connection or a sort of hardware issue like that, then maybe it's a software thing with one of your clips. I would say check your clips carefully and see if there's an error in any of those. Again, I've been working at Avid for decades and this was actually about a year ago, the first time I had encountered this. It's a very weird sort of thing where the camera did not encode the footage the right way, or maybe that's what it was supposed to do. And it's just a very weird encoding scheme where it encodes the full length of the time, but only puts video media in part of it. I don't know. It's very strange, hadn't run into it before, but this was the way I found to work around it and still be able to use the footage. Just took a little digging to make sure I found which clips were going to generate this error and kind of isolated those, transcoded everything else normally, and then just did this workaround for these few clips. If you had a whole movie full of clips like this, I'm not really sure what the best solution in that case would be because you don't want to have to manually reconform the whole thing at the end to get into your coloring. So you might need to find a different sort of workaround, but this was a way that worked for me. If that was helpful for you, as always, please like and subscribe and keep your eyes out on the channel for other Avid tutorials and tips. Thanks.